loaded question. Okay. It's 7.59. I love this. I love how fast you guys jumped on here. Um, I'm just going to give people a few more minutes to join in. Who do I have? Lindsay. Amazing. Just want to make sure there's no one stuck in like waiting room or something. I've done that before. Hey, Lindsay. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Back to bed. Good. Back to bed. Mommy has a call. I will be right back. I have to get a snack in this one. Oh, if you guys um hear thunder, we have a really wicked um thunderstorm going on. So I'm just I'm gonna be on mute, but just so you know. <laughs> oh, I'm jealous. I'm super jealous. Um, the coaches in Ted Kenny who live in um Cole is in Calgary, and he said it was like like they had the heat wave to like 10 degrees to hailstorms to thunderstorms, like, all within the span of, like, four or five days or something. I don't know. So, I was like, oh, thanks. But I love storms. Okay. 802. We'll give it a little more time. We lost somebody. Yeah, we lost Shay. Okay. I don't know where she went. Let me see if she's messaged me, and then we will get started. No. I don't see her. Okay, perfect. So... How's everybody feeling about hot girl summer? Getting better. Your like transformation picture like really motivated me. Good. I'm glad. Um, I'll I'll put up in the group the actual 15 week transformation because that first photo on the left is technically from like it is like when I started. So like a little background story. I started lifting weights before I got pregnant, and then got into amazing shape, got pregnant, like we all do, and then uh, stayed with my personal trainer all through um, my pregnancy, and then post-pregnancy, like, obviously, you know, just trying to get back at it and whatever, and then, yeah, just kind of went up in weight. I had hired this one coach, and she was just very negative, and I was not happy with the experience at all, and so I had all those very miserable-looking progress photos, <laughs> and that one photo, like, haunts me I hate it my face everything because I know exactly how I was feeling in that moment so and I think that was that would have been like two years ago I think but um that was probably me feeling like my my worst feeling my absolute worst so it's, uh, I'm glad that was inspiring for you thank you yeah so how's, hey Stacy. oh, your phone might die, okay, no problem. Hey Trish, how's your sound today? <laughs> it's working today, I don't know what happened the last time, it was really weird. We were like on the call and I could just see you like, <laughs> it's just like she's pressed, something's happening, something's not working, so that's hilarious. Um, awesome, and I see we have, uh, let me show I miss anyone, okay, perfect. So. I'm glad everyone is feeling really good about Hot Girl Summer. Your posts are like the highlight of my day. I love going through them. I love when I get to take like 10 minutes and just sit down and like really read through all of them. I don't want to ever miss one. Um, so thank you for keeping up with that. I appreciate it. Tonight, Lace, I want to talk about, um, I want to talk about change and I want to talk about how 
um, making massive change in your life is terrifying. Um, but you're all in this group because you want to change. If you didn't, you wouldn't be here. Um, we are designed as humans. There's Rebecca. Um, I'll let her audio join here. And there she is. Hey, Rebecca. Um, just Hi. You. Hey. So we literally just got started. So perfect timing. So all of you are in this group because you want to change. There's nothing wrong with you. You're all perfect the way you are, but we all know that we can be better versions of ourselves. And there's nothing wrong. With, there's nothing wrong with wanting that. Um, so, but as humans, we're, we're just designed to survive. We're designed to stay in comfort zones. We're not designed to smash through them. There's my man, Tanner. Oh, that's my boyfriend. Hi, baby. I mean, I, I, I was about to say I miss you, but I've never met you, but we're best of, hey, best hey, of all my friends. There's Maddox, it's your other boyfriend. Oh. Tanner's See? sleeping on the couch. It shows you how much I need to come see the kids because I can't even tell them apart now. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. So anything with change, whether it's like a lot of you have like opened up to me with what you want to like sort of see come out of all of this, um, which is great. So the, any, any of this can include like weight loss. It can include fitting into an old outfit, whether it's like a a pre-pregnancy outfit, or maybe it's a, a something you wore in college that you loved, or just something you wore last summer that fit really well, and you put up some fat, like went up some weight, and now it doesn't fit very nicely. So you want to get back into that. Um, it could be quitting smoking, it could be quitting drinking, it could be quitting marijuana, like drugs, anything. It can literally be anything. It can be making better food choices. Um, and that if it was easy, things like online fitness coaching wouldn't exist these challenges wouldn't exist. We'd all be high level performing whatever people and we like we wouldn't need coaches because if it was easy, then why the fuck would we need help? But we hire, co we, I don't even like to use the word hire. We invest in coaches. We invest in ourselves because you're following the path of someone who's already done it. You're following the path of someone who's maybe hit all of the adversities you're currently going through and what they learned along the way to get through that. So like, I know for me, um, it was one of my coaches in 10K Academy, Stacy, you know, Caleb, he put it into perspective for me about people who have multiple weight loss journeys, like success stories. I probably have like four different time periods in my life that I could post before and afters from. And he's like, you lost the weight and became this, new version of yourself but you didn't actually believe you were that person so you reverted back to who you believe you are who you identify with um and that's why the weight always comes back on or you do everything you follow the process and everything happens you have that weight but then you kind of it's like you reach it and it's like well what do i do now and how do i operate at this new level that i'm at and then you just revert back all the way so you need so not only do you have to become someone new to see huge surges of change, you have to actually believe that you can be that person and you need to start operating as that person before you make that full change. Because it's the same reason I encouraged my clients earlier in the new year to make vision boards. It was like, put your goals up as if you've already accomplished them. Live your days as if your goals are already something that's happening in your life, because then you're going to start to operate from that place and it's just going to manifest itself on its own. Um, so that's all scary. <laughs> like, let's just be real. That's all really scary. Like having to go through that, right? You have to level up, become someone new and leveling up causes growing pains. So, because, so when I said, when I was, uh, when I went live really quick, to drop the topic of this call, something I want you to think about that was said in my mentor's podcast and it really hit home was who you are right now is in this moment, it has absolutely nothing to do with your conditions. So how often do we hear it's like, well, I gave this weight, but it's because this happened. Well, I didn't stick to my plan because like, well, this happened and then that happened and this person said this. Like there's all these reasons, all these things. 
one weight on the rim. But what you're at now has nothing to do with your conditions. It has everything to do with the decisions you made when you were put into those conditions. So let that I need a sweater. That was um, when that when he said that I was just kind of like oh fuck okay because <laughs> I was such I was so guilty of blaming everything around me blaming well Matt brings home all this food for him and Isaac and like it's hard not to just like munch on it in between or I work hard during the week so it's like I like this I don't want to be awkward and not and say no to every dinner thing I'm invited to and it's like well. No, if I want to reach my goals, I need to just suck it the fuck up and say no. That That's like, if I want to get to where I need to be, I need to just do it. That's life. So conditions are created by decisions. Where we're at right now, whether or not we like it, our decisions created that condition. So what's even more painful than that is having to sit in those conditions and then think about it. For like, okay, and so for me, um what's the story i was going to use okay post transformation challenge that i won first prep to like now um when i went on stage i was 148 pounds two weeks later i lost two more pounds i was 146 pounds and then i spoke to my coaches and we decided that for my height and my muscle mass I should sit at about 140-ish pounds, healthy pounds through the year, off-season training, and I should aim for 135 when I go on stage. Okay, so, and it was like, and that was kind of based around also my coach who is only like two inches shorter than me, so we're very similar. And so it was easy to figure that out. Um, so I had this whole plan in my head. I finished my challenge, I finished my 15-week prep, I won my challenge first place. I was on a fucking high. I launched my business. Um, everything was just going up, 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 up. But I got so wrapped up in it. And then I didn't prepare for all those things that were coming up, all those old conditions that were going to come back. Like, let's say Christmas. I always get major, major blues at Christmas time. I struggle hard. I, um, I just, I, I find holidays, I find Christmas time just overwhelming. Um, I spend a lot of time crying. So, and I didn't prepare for that because I was on a high from my show. And it was like, well, here I go. Like, I can do anything. I won my challenge. Like, mm, I've got it in the bag. Nope. Um, ended up gaining back 14 pounds, I think. Yeah, about 14 pounds I gained back. Um, so that first, that started to hurt when I went back into like, I was getting to the one fifties and I was like, ah, oh, what are you doing? And then some stuff happened. And then I started to creep back to the one sixties and it was like, I don't know what to do, but, uh, and I got overwhelmed and I didn't prepare. I stopped checking in with my coach. I stopped doing my weekly check-ins. I stopped prepping my food. I just, all these different little things that I let happen and the decisions that I kept making led to the condition of 14 pounds up. And then I had to sit there and accept it. And I don't know how many times I can tell you, I sat in my bed at night, just being like, you fucking failure. Who are you to be a coach? You just gained all this weight back. Like who tra la la, you want a transformation challenge, but you gained half that 30 pounds back. So I had to sit there and sit there and I ruminate it and I would ruminate on it. And then it would debilitate me with fear and I wouldn't get back up and get to work. And then simultaneously at the same time, and some of the girls that are on this call were on the call. I then was going through shoulder injuries at the time. And I had a epic breakdown on one of these Zoom calls because I couldn't sleep at night. I couldn't train properly. Um, and I was just, well, I just wanted to give up on everything because I was in constant chronic pain. So um, also at that same time, I neglected my yoga practice. I neglected proper recovery. I was working, I was burning the candle at both ends to launch this business and keep up with my full-time job that I experienced burnout for the first time in my life, but I didn't know it was burnout. Um, it took me about five days to figure out that my body was literally saying like, you need to stop. Um, and then it just, it, it, it just, that I had to just, I was stuck in it and it was awful. So 
the hell? Oh, someone just joined. Brittany, hey. So, with that all being said, I want you guys in these journeys to be open to welcoming failure. I was like, what? <laughs> Why would you say that? Um, because when you welcome failure, it's a chance to learn how to do it differently and how to never do it again, right? So I know now that the first sign of pain, I'm not going to just keep training through it because it's like, well, I've got another show. The show is in July and I was getting mad at myself not taking a step back in November. Like, come on. Um, so it'll just, it'll, you'll see if you'll, what, it's not to say you'll never make a mistake again, but you'll see when you're starting to revert to old habits. You'll see when um, some conditions are coming up that you're going to be forced to make a decision around, right? So another example for me of welcoming failure from my business perspective would be my business at the beginning grew faster than I was ready to keep up with it. And then because of that series of decisions that led to the conditions of my business actually dropping off for a little bit. So my first three or my first three for sure clients, one, two of which are on this call, but my first three clients, they all came to me. They literally all saw that I launched and they're like, you're a coach now. Great. I want to work with you. And we hopped on a call and like, boom, bang. I had, I was like, it was like, wow, what is this? So, and then I ran a 14 day challenge and I had a bunch of girls just like, yep, we want to convert. We want to work with you. And it was like, okay. So the problem was I got kind of cocky because my clients were coming to me. They were asking to work with me. And then I stopped doing the work. I took my foot off the gas pedal because I just figured, well, people are just asking to work with me. So, um, and I stopped doing the work that I had done to lead those girls to wanting to come to me. I had done all this hard work, made a series of the right decisions that led to people being drawn to that. They resonated with what I was putting out there. But then it was like, it's kind of like when you're following a plan, following a plan, following a plan, kind of like a challenge, for instance. And then you hit reach that end date and it's like, well, what do I do now? Right? So many people then just fall back. Like, it's like when you restrict, think of restrict, the best example, I guess, would be like restrictive diets. You restrict and you restrict and you restrict and you restrict for months on end. You finish it, you lose all that weight and then you have it again. And it's just like, and then you go crazy on it. And then your body starts doing weird things because it's been restricted from it. And then you're right back where you started. Right? So my business was growing so fast. I wasn't training my mindset, first of all, I was not working on my mindset to the level I should have been for what was coming at me. Um, and I stopped doing the same amount of work that I did to gain my first few clients, which then in turn, it was like, I had a couple drop off. And then it was like, I didn't plan for that. Like I just figured you know, everyone's gonna stay. No, like life happens. Either you lose your job, there's a death in the family. So like things happen. Um, and that's the scary thing about launching a business like this is I could have six of you tomorrow say like, look, no, sorry, I can't do it. Like, you know, and it's like, I can't fight you today. So welcoming failure, because now I know I have to, even if I reach a milestone, all that means is now my next goal, I've got to aim higher. Not try and stay the same, not not decrease my productivity. It's like, okay, I either maintain it at that level or I need to aim 10% higher and do the work to do that, which means welcoming the failure so that when I see myself maybe taking my foot off the gas pedal a little, little bit or I start to get lazy with putting out content or I, I forget to update something, like, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll catch it faster. Um, so that's where I say welcome failure because you're going to learn something from it, right? So to wrap things up, I'm going to start by saying, I want you guys to get uncomfortable. <laughs> get uncomfortable. It's the only way to grow is to get uncomfortable because I truly, it's going to be corny, but I truly believe in that um quote that's like like everything you want is like sitting right outside of your comfort zone and it's true because to for, okay for instance this challenge I think I probably sent out 
150 to 200 cold DM messages to people, people who have um, sent me stuff on TikTok, people, I think a bunch of you were in my free community and that's how I found you. Um, and I just, it was like, hope for the best, you know what, fuck it, I'm launching a challenge because my mentor put out a podcast and he always says, speed of implementation, you've got to act fast and figure it out as you go. Don't try to be perfect. Don't try to know everything before you start. Just fucking start and then figure it out as you go. It's the same with learning to count your macros or doing the workouts or anything like that. Just like, just jump in, just do it. And you're going to figure it out as you go. So, but that's really uncomfortable. Like I'll never say any of this is easy because it's not. Get uncomfortable. Doing my 15 week prep forced me to get uncomfortable. And I can't even begin to tell you how many times I would be up at night or like, I don't know, waking up for a 4 a.m. workout and just being like, this is so not fucking worth it. Like I'm like, I'm done. Or being so sick of the food because it's so basic. And it's just like, no, it's not worth it. But then it's like, no, it is because I'm always, I'm, I'll be proud when I finish. And I chose to do this. Just like you all chose to do this challenge. So why not see it all the way through, right? So get uncomfortable. By getting uncomfortable and learning to believe in yourself, you have to trust yourself, right? So trust yourself that in this discomfort, A, you're going to be okay. Because if someone else has done it and made it out on the other side, you're going to do as well, no matter what. Um, but you have to get uncomfortable to build that trust. So that's why I always tell my girls, use affirmations. And don't just use like generic, like, don't just use like, what's something like, what's an example? Like, don't just use like, I am like, make them like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like get deep with your affirmations. Like I am capable because of X, Y, and Z. Like I can do this because A, B, and C, like get, dive a little deeper on the, on the affirmations. Um, and fail forward. We talked about this um, in one of our group calls was uh, failing forward. And that means not leaving any stones left unturned. Basically, whatever you do, like if even if even if what you're trying to achieve here doesn't work how you want it to in the end, operate in a way that you can at the end say like this didn't work, but I did absolutely everything I possibly could because then that means that is how you realize like that's how you learn you need to change your approach or not your approach you need to change your strategy because if your approach is if your effort and your approach event, then your then it's your strategy that needs to change right um believe in the possibility i think my post i think today or yesterday was about that you literally just need to believe that it can happen um i'm the first to admit i was a i'm, I'm just meant to be bigger I'm just meant to hold extra weight. Everyone in my family does. Um, like, like, I came from generations of women who used the fucking big boned excuse. And it's just like, all that did was set up so much body dysmorphia for all of us. Thank you. But no more big boned. Like, there's nothing wrong with your bones. Your bones are perfect. Um, and you can still fucking body no matter what your bones look like. And... Talk about bones and yin, because that's where they're important. Not, not, not with your body image. Come on. So I'm the, I remember when I was, for me, I think the moment I truly, truly started to believe that I had the power to completely transform my body to one that I loved and was proud of, um, was when I started to see my oblique lines on my stomach. That was like, I was like, what? Like, so it's like, I was just like, no, I'm never going to have those. Um, so now I have, I currently have a standing goal that's in posted in my room. That is like, I will have like visible, like really visible abs by December 31st, 2021. That's my goal. Um, so there's like a touch of urgency on it, but it's not so rushed that I'm going to get weird about it. So believe in the possibility, but also don't compare your week one in hot girl summer to somebody's week 20 or two years with another program, right? Because everyone started somewhere. You don't know what brought them to this, what happened before. Um, and this all goes back to just the stories that we tell ourselves. So what is the actual fact and what is the story that you're telling yourself? The stories are usually, I can't do this. 
it's too hard. It's easier for Samantha and Trish and Jackie. And like, I'm just, I'm never going to do this. And I'm just, I'm, I'm meant to be fat and I'm meant to be unhealthy. Like, it's just who I am. No, no, those are just stories. That's just your inner asshole, like knocking on your brain to be a fucking dick because he doesn't ever go away. So you just need to speak louder with the facts. And the facts are you're here and you're doing the work. You're showing up for the calls. You're posting in the group. You're prepping your food. You're doing the workouts. Yeah, I know you're sore, but you're conditioning. That's not going to be forever. That will go away. It'll get easier. Um, so, and just not and just not blaming things that are out of our control, right? <coughs> so, if you are struggling with the idea of the possibility that this can be true, I really just want you to visualize it and um and that in visualizing visualizing it is how you manifest it okay so and that goes back to the whole like posting your goals in places that you can see them all the time so that you automatically start to operate from a place as though you have already achieved those goals and that so it's like it's kind of like um a quote that i have on my vision board is visualize visualize yourself visualize Visualize yourself as like your highest self and like start showing up as her, I think is what it is. Um, so it's like, I, I need to act and operate as though I'm already that person. I believe that I am and I will be here and I'm going to become her. I know I've come a long way, but I know I have a long way to go. Um, act on faith. Like, honestly, just act on faith. Instead of this is hard, this is impossible. Literally tell yourself, but what if it fucking works? Like, what if it works? What if you are successful? What if you do lose 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds? What if you do recomp your entire body? What if you do look fucking amazing in your wedding dress? Like, visualize it. I just want you to see it. So act on faith. Um, because if you don't do that, like, how do you expect to take any action? Because, what if, again, back to decisions based on conditions, um, and staying trapped in a thought, which is what creates fear, right? So have faith and move forward or stay fucking stuck. That's, that's my simple term for that. Um, welcome failure, which we talked about. Don't give up. Like, I know there's, there's a picture that I want to find that I want to post in the group that, uh, Angelina in the group shared with us all one time. And it was talking about, um, she put up two, actually, I think it was like progress. She put up one about progress not being linear. And then it was like a, how a week of losing a pound actually looks. So it showed like the first day of the week, like the person was like 160 pounds or something. Then it was like, follow their plan. This, this, and that. Everything was great. Yeah, yeah. The next day they were like down like half a pound or something. Then they like did this, missed that, blah, blah. They were up two pounds. Then they were back down one, up one. And then it was like, boom, they were down that full pound in seven days. And it was showing you like, Cause like they had this meal here and they held some water from it. And then like they caught up on their water and then this happened, blah, blah. And like, so it's like, there's always going to be fluctuations and that doesn't mean it's not working. It means you literally, this is when you really have to be patient and just trust the process. And if you're fail, if you're not leaving any stones left unturned and you're operating at 120% effort, you have to just trust it. You have to trust it. Um, and it's something that you have to give a solid four plus weeks. And that's usually four weeks. Or if we want to get like really serious, you could say even like do it for six months. But I think that's kind of long. I'd say more like four to 12 weeks. And that's when you, if you're doing everything 100% or at least 90%, that's when you know like, okay, it's not my effort that's the problem. Like there's something wrong with the strategy. There's something wrong with the blueprint. Okay. Um, and last, because I love to keep it positive, and this was another thing that was taught to me from, from one of my coaches in my coaching academy, is celebrate everything. Absolutely everything. Because if you're constantly celebrating, there's no fucking time to be upset about anything. Like, drank another liter of water, post it to the group. Tell us, like, awesome. If I, uh, did your workout, did an extra walk, celebrate, celebrate. Um, shirt feels good. Someone complimented your back muscles, like anything at all. Sell up, right? I want you to celebrate everything because if you're like, and stop calling wins small, like it's so easy for us 
to post that, you'd be like, it's not a huge win, but it's like, no, 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 it's a win. All I hear is it's a win. If it's a win to you, then it's a win to everyone in this group. Fucking own it and put it out there. Because the more, if you just keep, because if you celebrate, it's, it goes back to that being 1% better every day. Because if you're 1% better every day, you're 365% better at the end of the year. Because small changes, small consistent changes over long periods of time yields huge results. So it's the same as saying, imagine there's a pile of rice and then there's one grain of rice here. You'd say that's a small pile, like there's nothing there. And it's like, but what if every single day over a year, you just moved one piece, one grain of rice over every single day. Well, in a year, you're going to have a huge ass pile. So look at your journey that way is you're just moving. You're just little steps along the way. Because when, if you try to change, it would be like trying to, like, if you throw, I had, okay. So for instance, um, some, someone messaged me and they said, um, I don't think I can do all the workouts. Like I'm just in too much pain, blah, blah, blah. And it was like, okay, so fine. So do three a week. Don't do five. If you can't handle five, don't do five. You're going to set yourself up to fail. You're going to hate the fucking workouts. You're probably going to hate me because you're going to take it personal. We all like, that's just how our brains go. It's like when you're in an aerobics class and they make you do something you don't like for about five seconds there, you're like, fuck you. Um, it's like certain in poses I put, I'd make people do like when I make people do Seiza with toes curl, I always say to them, like, I forgive you for everything you thought of me for two minutes. Like that's always the joke. So it's like, if you overkill this journey at the beginning, if you're like, well, I've got to get my water in and I've got to get my five things in and I've got to put my food, like, you're going to hate it. So make sure that how you're also acting is in line with where you're currently at. Okay. Because if you try to do it all at once, it's just going to cause overwhelm. I don't want you guys to be overwhelmed. I actually want you to have fun with this um, because that's what's going to make this a lasting thing. That's what's going to make it an actual true lifestyle not just a challenge. The challenge is just a stepping off point to the rest of everything. So that's it. That's all. That's what I had for you tonight. Our, to wrap it, to totally finalize it, is um, our conditions are created by our decisions. So what decisions are you making to better your conditions? That's what I want to say. But that's it. If anyone else has anything to add, I'm always open to hearing it. Unmute yourselves at any time. And uh, I'd love to chat. Yeah. Mm. But if no one has anything to say, I see a sleeping baby. Oh my God. It's so cute. <laughs> I don't know if you saw my post. Um, I literally posted just before you started. Um, <laughs> I'm going to open it right now. Stacy, share the positive today at work. Oh, he rested for the little nest made bucket vision. Oh, cute. So tell me, like you have a story to share. Yeah. So we were just like working away, whatever. And like, we don't, we don't do pools, right? We just do gardens. And I like looked in the pool and I was like, that leaf is like really moving in the jet. That's really weird. And then I'm like, wait, that's not a fucking leaf. Oh my God, that's a mouse. <laughs> and he had no way out. So we like went and we found like the little skimmer thing and we scooped him up and he was like, not okay. Oh. So we like put him in the little bucket. I went and found some dead grass and some flowers <laughs> and we put it in with him. We're like, well, we'll just see. Maybe he'll settle. Like, and yeah, it was so awesome because he just kind of chilled in there for the day. And then when we let him go, I was like, well, we'll see what happens. Like, if he doesn't move, he might not make it. And literally, as soon as I put him down, he like lifted his little head, like looked around and just like walked off. Like, I was like, oh, it's such a good day. <laughs> hey, today, I don't know if anyone else is feeling this, but like, I had the best fucking day ever. Like, I, what has something happened this morning and I was like in my car and I, I literally said out loud I was like I am fucking affirming that today's gonna be the best day ever like I just what happened something happened and it made me yell that and I just like decided like no today's gonna be awesome awesome and uh it was like it freaking was just everything good kept happening and I had a call with uh, Kirst this afternoon and it went really well. And then like 
went to a yoga class, like went to the gym, did my workouts. Like, it's just been great. It's been great. And then you saved a mouse. That's so cute. <laughs> I love it. I have um, baby birds on my balcony right now. The one you probably saw them in my Insta story. The um, yeah, your little doves. They're yeah, they're getting bigger. She's like, you can tell because she's when she's on top of them now, she's all like puffed out. So yeah, just, <laughs> I don't know what everybody knows, but I had doves show up in my flower bo- in one of my flower center boxes on my balcony, and then all of a sudden Isaac was out there one day, and he's like. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Sure enough, there's a friggin' egg. And then there was two. And uh, they hatched last week. And I remember I was actually so excited because she appeared and then laid her eggs like a week or two after Matt moved out when stuff was like really, really bad here. And um, then he moved out and this bird shows up. She lays her eggs and my friend Alicia she saw the picture and she's like, Oh my God. She goes, what a beautiful sign of like new beginnings. And I was like, Oh, I needed to hear that. And it's like, ever since she said that to me, like everything's just been like, like it's been like so good. So, and then that's what, and then Brian did the podcast and he was like, launch this challenge. And I'm like, you know what? Okay. (laughs) And like, here we are. So I'm happy you're all here. I appreciate you all so much. But um, yeah. Thanks for sharing, buddy. Love that. Mm. I sent um, Veronica a message actually today. I'll wait to see if she got back to me. But, um, but yeah, anyone else have anything they want to share? No pressure at all. No one like has to talk. I just always like to, uh, I never want anyone to think that I'm just uh, hogging the stage here. What's up, Trish? Yeah, I'm just, it's just, I've been sitting outside watching the wildlife in my backyard tonight. So I've had like <laughs> bunnies, walking around and all different kinds of birds and of course my cat's like which bunny do I go after first (laughs) but yeah it was just it's just been a lots of wildlife in the backyard today it's kind of cool you live on trail like back onto like trails or something don't you well they're they're close oh you have a nice yeah oh my god it's huge yeah it's pretty big that's amazing the house that I used to own with Matt has a super big lot in it. I kind of, I miss it some days. Like I love being in a, in an apartment. I really do. But um, I miss the convenience of a yard. So, oh, there's Chelsea. How's the wrap up? <laughs> hey, Chelsea. I see you. Let's see if she can talk. I know you probably have Miri. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I hear her. Um, Chelsea, we've pretty much wrapped up, but uh, the replay will go up tonight. Is, uh... Aww, Mary. Cutie pie. Chelsea also has a little, a little baby at home. She's probably, you know, I have no idea how old she is. Coming up on a year, for sure. But, um, yeah, lots of babies in the group. Oh. She unmuted. I was hoping she was going to say something. But yeah. And then, oh, and then Shay. I see Shay is still in the call. If anyone wants uh, one of those epic shirts, (laughs) send a message to Shay. I think it was, uh, I think Lindsay had posted a picture of a shirt. I think, yeah. I think it was Lindsay who posted it. That whole I am fucking radiant shirt. (laughs) So yeah, if anyone wants one, reach out to Shay. She's the master designer of those. And um, yeah, so a reminder, we're coming into Thursday. Yeah, baby, I see that shape. Uh, we're coming into Thursday. The water challenge will be officially over on Saturday. And I'll announce the winner on Sunday. And at the same time, I announce the winner on Sunday, I will announce our next challenge which i believe i i i think i decided which one i want to do i'm just trying to decide if i want to do like a two-week mini challenge or a one-week mini challenge this early on so we'll find out but um keep chugging your water it'll come down to it'll literally if if it's a tie like so usually when i decide the water it's who made the most water posts 
um, or like the minimum one a day. Um, that's okay, Chelsea. We still love you and Miri very much. Um, it's the minimum one a day. If it turns out there was like two, three, four people, I feel like it's going to be way more than two. I feel like it's going to be all of you. Um, this one might actually end up being like a lucky draw one. So we will find out because you guys are all effing crushing it. And then there goes Stacy goes and grabs your bottle right now. <laughs> I love it. You reminded me. Yeah. I'm a little bit behind today. I got cocky. I sent you guys that picture and then I just stopped. <laughs> so. But no, I've been going hard on the water lately. It feels good. I have to prepare because I have the rest of this week and then I have um, next week is normal and then I start my peak week and peak week is like the weirdest experience of my life because it's like you wake up in the I I've never ate more chicken and asparagus than I had in my life during peak week and then it's like one day you drink like eight liters of water then you drink seven liters of water then you drink six liters of water and then suddenly they like slash it to like two liters and then on sh and then like the day before the show you you get to drink like one liter I think and then the show day you drink like half a liter the whole day because they just want to suck you dry oh my god and it's yeah I I uh I almost pissed myself like 14 times <laughs> last year like I pulled up <laughs> my car and peed in takeout cups okay I'm not kidding when I say that like it was and there are actual people like on our team like some of the grandmaster women like they're like I can't do it they're like I peed in Sobeys <laughs> <laughs> like it was just it's awful it's awful I don't know why anyone would choose to prep <laughs> it's fucked up but it's <laughs> super fun so um yeah so I probably should have uh, that would have been an interesting week for water challenge but oh this song um it's probably in my room thank you um so yeah I think that's I think that's everything Oh, no, yeah, so winner, so yeah, I really do think this water one is going to be um, a draw one, a draw one. I found this, um, I found this, like, thing online where you can input names, and it's, like, a random wheel picker, so we'll, uh, we'll do that, and then winner's going to take one of these, um, but if, if you guys already have a big gallon, which, like, half this group does, <laughs> um, I have alternative prize in mind. So we'll see. Unless you decide that you really do want another bottle, I would totally understand that. I hope I win. I need a new one. That's right. Yours broke, Shay. Uh, they're um, like the best bottles, but they are pretty like thin. I, when I was living in that old apartment last year, I think I told you guys, but like when my crazy neighbor like stole my cat and stuff like that, um, I was super mad at him. So I was trying to like piss him off in the last week I was living there. And I was like, I would like purposely like pick something up and it was like, whoops, and just like drop it. And I took my bottle and I dropped it and the whole bottle smashed out. And I was like, well, there's like instant karma for being petty, but worth it. <laughs> like, so yeah, Shay, hopefully you win one and we'll get you a new one. So yeah, if you guys want, post your biggest takeaway from our call to the group. There's a fruit flyer on me. And uh, let's just keep going. Tomorrow's Thursday. We're almost at our first weekend. Love you too, Shay. Um, thank you so much for keeping the group positive and just like keep up with your posts. I like absolutely love how into this you guys are. It warms my heart and it's only the first week. So it's a fruit fly, like just one. It's driving me crazy. Um, yeah, so there will be a replay. Anyone who didn't catch it, there will be a replay as always. So... If that's all we got, then I'll cut this call and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. So have the best night of your lives. I haven't posted lately. You ladies are awesome. Oh, Chelsea, we know you're there. We love you. We love you, love you, love you. Um, Chelsea's an OG. She was my... Chelsea, I think you were my very... Oh, you went to BC. Yeah, Chelsea was my first client. Very first client. And Stacy was my second one. Um, so they're my, they're my OGs. But um, yeah. Let's kill this. Let's kill this rest of this fucking week and the rest of this challenge. I love you all. I believe in you all. Have the best night of your life. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for showing up, guys. Remember to reach out at any time. Okay?
Bye-bye.